being with the horses every day, seeing the youngsters as they progress through. I love it. And I love being a part of a team. This is more like a family, You're a big family here. I gotta go, I'm being interviewed. <laughs> Okay, actually, listen, tell me, where did it all begin with your love of horses? Um, so I was probably about seven or eight, and um, a friend of my parents had a horse, and we used to just go there and ride out on weekends. And, um, yeah, it was just really chill, chilled and laid back, and um, we really enjoyed it, me and my sister. We used to sort of hack around Westwood, the local area, and, um, yeah. Brilliant. And, listen, were your parents into uh, horses at the time? Not at all. So uh, what do they do for scared. a living? My mum's a hairdresser. She was, she, I think she's the only black hairdresser in Bradford on Avon, actually. Um, and she doesn't live in Bradford now, but she probably still would be. Um, and then my dad, he worked in a factory, I think, Sun Chemical back then. Well, back then it was anyway. And so. you told me there was were, there were some form of disco dancing going on. They used to be disco dancers, that's how they met, yeah. Um, and I think Julie Brown, I think she's a sort of celebrity and lives in America. They used to dance with her, I think. Um, so were they semi-professional disco dancers? Yeah, they, they sort of went to the nationals and things like that. And so what's your dancing ability like? <laughs> we're not going to we're not going to ask you for um, a demonstration. Yeah, you know, I I you know, I Did can hold few, my own. <laughs> takes a few vodkas. Doesn't take a few vodkas. Okay, though. excellent. So, well, maybe um, at the end of the show we'll show that. <laughs> <laughs> so you develop your love of riding from sort of 8 or 9. Yeah. And then how did it go forward? Did you go into pony club? Yeah, so we had um I think most of our riding has been through friends that have had horses. So we've been really fortunate. Um, and I started off doing Prince Philip Cup with people we knew that rode in the local area where we were before. Um, and then I think one day the daughter, Lisa, she had um, a pony and I was going to watch her play polo at Windsor. And the night before she fell ill. So I was taught to ride and swing a stick on an ironing board. And then I took her place the next day at Windsor <laughs> in a polo match. And do you find being with horses therapeutic? Yeah, every day. That's why I do it every day. <laughs> it keeps me sane. <laughs> it keeps me sane, yeah. Excellent. And we're here at Neil Mulholland today, but where was your first role in horse racing? My first role would have been at um, Chloe Roddick's. She was at Wellow at the time, and she was a pre-training sort of yard for Paul Nichols at the time. So we did Must get some too. really nice, I didn't know who they were, and I'd be riding this horse thinking, oh God. And they'd be like, oh yeah, that one's worth quite a lot of money. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> don't tell me that. Wow, and now in what year did you arrive at here? 2013. Excellent. Yeah. And what's your role here at Neil's? Um, I saw, I'm an assistant um, traveling head person um, but then there's you know whatever else needs to be done on the yard like Neil said earlier I, I haven't done it for a long time because of Covid and stuff but you know if he needed a babysitter I'd always be on hand as well to look after <laughs> the boys. And how many horses do you ride a day then? Um, on average I would say six. Last year was a, was, a, was a year where, you know, Black Lives Matter came into it, the unfortunate murder of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. um, how did that make you feel whilst, you know, the country was going through all this? That was quite a difficult time, actually, because you started to see opinions of your friends, who you, th who you thought were friends, um, and there did some... Not all, obviously, just some, yeah, it was quite shocking to see the opinions of certain people you thought you knew, and that was hard. Some people were willing to be educated and, and sort of corrected and, and took things from different points of view. Um, others just deleted. Yeah, that was, that was quite hard. It was per it's personal because it's, it's like you're not really seeing it from 
my point of view. And what, what does Black Lives Matter mean to you then? Well, I know a lot of people find it uh, quite controversial and they're not, they don't like the term Black Lives Matter because they say all lives matter. And I think there's a deeper meaning to it rather than just Black Lives Matter. I think it's just taken into account the, the differences, how, how people are treated. For instance, my daughter's 18 in August. In 18 years, I've never bought her a card with a black girl on it. You know, a birthday card or a Christmas card. You, that you just don't see them and it's those Because subtle, they're not available or because you've not thought about it? No, because they're not there. They're not there. They're not in the show. I don't know any supermarkets that sell cards with, you know, black people on it or, or people of colour. So it's the sort of subtle differences you didn't realise until you really thought about it. And horse racing is predominantly a, a white sport. I think that the diversity is definitely increasing within stable staff. But how do you think we can progress and make the whole sport more reflective of society? I, well, I think that you start, start from an early age and you use the horses in schools and get the interest from a young age. Um, horses are a really good incentive for kids that are struggling with their attention in the classroom. If you were able to give them a bit of an incentive in using the horses, then you might see a different child in the classroom. And tell me, you've not just uh, here, you've, you've also started stunt riding, I believe, but um, ran into a bit of a difficult situation. Yeah, so I ha I've, I've not done anything before. I'm not on the stunt register, but an opportunity came up um, to do a stunt riding a horse. And as part of the sort of process of getting into character, I was painted black. And so how did that make you feel? Um, when I was sat there, I just wanted to get on with it and get the job done. I, I'd sort of, somebody put my name forward for it and said, oh, this person would be good, you know. So I didn't want to let anybody down. So I just accepted it and got on with it and didn't think, I just didn't, I was caught up in the moment and I didn't think about it. It was a really good day. I was treated really, really well. They, they were constantly sort of, asking if I was okay and all that. It was great, it was an amazing day. And then in, in sort of like the later stages, um, a couple of people, the first thing the person said was, you know, are you okay with this? And I said, yeah. And then the conversation went on and, you know, well, actually they shouldn't be doing this to you because if they're cast in a black actor, actress, they should be finding a black stunt double for that role. And if it means you've got to bring somebody in from abroad to do it, that's what you do. You don't paint somebody a completely different colour, if you like. But it was only afterwards I started to think, actually, they, they've got a point. They've got a point. Um, but it's, where's the line? Where, because they've made the effort to find a person of colour to be in this, the stunt, but yet they're still making Yeah, it's me not darker. like dyeing someone's hair, is it? It's yeah. very, very different. And then, you know, it was mentioned that, well, actually, it's to do with camera angles. You, they could have said they used a black stunt rider, but this part of me didn't need to be filmed at all. You could have filmed the horse's neck or face or whatever, you know. And have they apologised since? Yeah. I was gutted because the, the footage won't be used and it was the biggest opportunity I felt like I'd ever had. Now, have you received any other racism during your time within horse racing? I, a little bit. There's a, a couple of direct uh, incidences. One more recently where um, an ex-employee came onto the yard and um, was handed a, a coffee that was too dark. And um, the first thing she said was, you know, this, this coffee's almost as dark as Ashley or something, and she's going for, it's going to get the milk to lighten it up a little bit. Um, it Flippin it comments, could have been taken as hurt. banter if she was in my phone book or we were friends on Facebook, or, but we're not. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't cool. And tell me, you were telling me you were going to wear a, a BLM face mask at Cheltenham last year, but you decided against it. I knew that it would be quite controversial um, and I don't think I was ready to to receive any kind of negativity for me doing that 
I wonder whether I would have even been shown on TV with it. I wonder, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're leading up, I wonder whether that would have even been... So do you think they, they try and hide it? I don't think they would have hidden it. I just don't think they would have um, necessarily... I think they might have just skipped past it, maybe. So do, you, so do you think racing struggled to embrace Black Lives Matter or the eradication of racism that's come more to the fore over the last 12 months since George Floyd? I think that the, a lot of the people in racing are working hard to make changes, but a lot of maybe the supporters have more, more to say about it. The people watching from the sidelines, maybe. It's not going to happen overnight. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, and I think that racing has done a really, made a good positive start on um, sort of promoting the diversity within the sport. Thank you.